I long for that great day of intimacy by the power of the Ruach HaKodash when we will need no man to teach us and instruct us in the Torah, the ways, the derech of our Abba Almighty Yahweh. We shall gather in his bed with songs of great delight, singing and dancing in the Ruach. The power of his name shall be elevated above all flesh, above all concepts and philosophical ideas of life, Nothing will be able to impede to cause us to move in the excellence of his power. That we are the epitome of his strength in all characteristics and in character above all things. For that day shall be. That is where Abraham, Yudshach, and Yaakov, they look for that day. Where by the Ruach HaChodash shall in part or bring to life that which was spoken in the better sheets in the beginning. We will not need our manly intuition or our knowledge of a substance to reveal the power of our Abba that we may yada, we may know him. In knowing him, we shall rejoice greatly. So I long for that day. I don't know if I'll be around. If you shall allow me to stick around for that day. I will not be saddened either way. For I wait for the promises, his dabari, his words, to be fulfilled with great excellence in the bosom of Yisrael. Greetings to you all, our friends, our listeners, you that have joined us via the live stream in whatever capacity you are joining us in. We greet you all the Shabbat. This is the Shabbatont of our Abba that we rest in the assurance of that name. In the name of Yoshua HaMashiach. Because the name of the Son and the Abba is Ichat, it's one name. He is just simply the expression of Yah's great deliverance. His power to redeem a nation that he has elected, that they are beloved to him. That that nation is a Sogula, a very peculiar and special people with attributes that are not common to the world. So when the world sees us, they marvel in amazement. And they speculate. They are taking a wash because they know not nor understand the power of the Ruach, the spirit of life. Yah is Ruach. He is the breath of life. He is the substance of all living things. And so we long for that day whereby the power of this living word shall be made alive in Yisrael that the outpouring of the Ruach, the spirit of life, his fellowship in the midst of us, that we will not take it so lightly. That we will realize that what a great opportunity and the one that created all beings, all substance of life, that he gathers in the midst of a few that truly have assembled themselves to shekha, to worship, to fall prostrate, to bow down, to consider their ways, to understand their ways, which are non-productive. Produce only one thing, death, separation through the channels of pride and arrogance and a haughty disposition. It doesn't bring life. It doesn't cause the wisdom of Yah to, to be personified in us and we die. 
prematurely, without wisdom, understanding of the Abba. Above all things, Yah, instruct me. That I may, Lord, and not forget the principles of our Abba. Above all things, I want to yada to experience him. Not only in the pages of the Khidve, but in the reality of my love. That I love his mitzvah, his commandments, and I guard them above all things whether I am received or rejected. It makes no difference at all. Greetings again to you, our listeners and friends, you for your great kindness of your gifts. We do barak you all. We greet you all. We do appreciate your kindness. Our Achot Felicia there in the Baltimore area, we greet you for your kindness, your great gifts and offerings and all of our friends wherever you are we greet you all in Yeshua's mighty name that he may strengthen us all and give us the resolve that is necessary for the hour that we're in battle is intense and it's real Yisrael we're fighting for our lives for this Living truth. So we greet you all, Arzachin, Tayonia, Arzachin, Davis there in Los Angeles, those that are gathered with you, and those through their own surmising have joined us to see how he will facilitate my own ideas, my concepts, my religious asri. We welcome you. For we do not bear the sword of Yah here in vain. It doesn't go forth empty. It doesn't return unto him without accomplishing that which he has diligently sent it forth to do. To cause life to rise and to cause death to feel the land. So we greet you all in your Yeshua's mighty name. Hope that Yah has granted you his rich blessings of his wisdom understanding that we may receive yours to run and with great delight uh, often as I in the process of the repetitiveness of my speech I generally say basically the same things over and over for my Zachin, bitter means straight me out in that area. But there are things that I have never forgotten, principles that I learned. And I was taught the process of the processes, which in this latter final stage of my life will cause the greatest production of his peri, the fruit and the fruits of life. And that is vitally important unto the nation of Yisrael. As I have misguidedly preached in many aspects of things of Torah, I've certainly been ignorant of many things, and I'm still ignorant of the vast majority of what Torah teaches. That's why I get excited when the simplicity of Yah's Torah is revealed unto me. But over the 35, nearly 35 years of preaching and ignorance and my unlearned ability, very few men, those that have congregated with me and fellowship with me, very few, as I was talking to my Akshimri the other day, I said to him, very few men, they will say to me, what an excellent message, nice teaching. That was a blessing. But very few men have said to me, I have learned, I have learned so much. 
I have learned much. They will tell me that nice message. But very few men have said that to me and very few with this continuance of the repetitiveness of that statement. I found few. And I meet a few when I say that. And so when I think of the attitude of one that says that and what develops them, and the reason is just like the one that began to weep at the feet of Yoshua HaMashiach, wash his feet with her tears. And what a man realizes that Yah has forgiven him of much. He appreciates much. And one negates to realize that to whom much is forgiven, that one loves much. To whom one that thinks that little is forgiven, they don't love much. They are unappreciative. And so before my friend came in, my heart and my mind just pondered that. Overwhelmed. And so in my little office over there, I can cry. No one sees me. I'm overtaken. My heart, the tears flow so liberally. Because I thought of his words of great strength. So I, it's a great strength to the given man that he makes sure that his his armament is prepared that I may feed the house, make sure that he continues to learn. It's one thing that I often say. That's why you have never heard me with disparaging words to annihilate, to eviscerate the importance of the value of evangelist hearts feels mentoring in my life. Because I tell you all the time, I learn so much from him. I learn what to do and also what not to do. But I learn much. And there was what Jolomo would call the machel, words of wisdom that he spoke in the proverbial sense, I've never forgotten. And it was the strength of that pillar that brought understanding of the simplest of things. His rebuke, I never resisted. The one time, as I've told us the story, and when I submitted, whatever it takes, you tell me, I will obey. And I have never... And I did not flounder or falter from that commitment. And so there are very few that can understand. That's why we need simple men. The beauty. I appreciate that, my friend. And my appreciation for him and to him is as valid as his appreciation. His words of great strength. Beautiful encouragement because he knows what Yah has done for him. He could not have done that. Neither could have I. Your generation that lacks so much, our arrogance tells us that we have much. But we don't, Israel. Teach me, my Abba, that I may learn. From the faithfulness of those that labor among me, from the Zachayim. That's why it's important to have wise men. And the beauty of their strength is beyond, beyond the superlatives of expression to destroy. It is something that the mind cannot express. And the mind is simply overtaken with the allness of the matter of the circumstance. They looked upon Yoshua and said, there's no other man that speaks like this man. 
He doesn't speak with the homiletics. He speaks with a dynamic that is far more reaching. It reaches to the inward parts. It destroys and throw down. It brings judgment that the house may be built correctly. I was saying to my Ah Yosef as he handed me some boards yesterday and helped me to move scaffolds. I said, Yosef, I have never had any kind of formula instructions on how to build, but I've always known how to build. I could build. No one has ever taught me, so he said, you never looked in a book. I said, certainly. But you don't learn from the book. You must be instructing no more than you get faith by reading the book. I said, I've always been able to look at things, and I've been able to do it. I've watched other men. I've always been able to do it without any kind of of formal instructions. Look at what kind of project I've worked on, I've always been able to build. I've always never needed instructions than the books. That's kind of boring trying to read the process uh, how to erect a certain type of building. So I've never been given over unto that. But I know how to build. I know how to build well. No one ever taught me how to lay a block to build a house. But I knew from the first time I laid a block how to build. I had no mentor to teach me those things. You understand? So it is in the ways of Omari Yah. Those things were laid down before I ever was created. There were builders and master builders. Uh, and all this is the knowledge of Almighty Yahweh. And he imparts unto those that which he will. And to whomever he will. There are men that cannot read and write. But they are excellent in their determination. Their knowledge of matters of life. The ability to extrapolate. To draw from. Uh, just from the actions of others. And we as a nation, we must appreciate that. You don't have to be great. That if you are great, then serve the nation of Yisrael. You want to be great among the people, serve, deny yourself and serve them. That's why there is not much greatness among the house. I'm going to teach. I want you to turn to Yeshaya, Isaiah chapter 9. There's not much greatness among Yah's house today. Because it's one thing, the strength of great men. Can I tell you what is synonymous with great men and great warriors? It is one thing that is synonymous or just a part of the DNA and it's a trait of them. They have the power to judge and they judge and they judge. They judge persistently and consistently. I want to, as I announced on last Shabbat, the one before that, I want to touch on the 12 pillars of Almighty Yahweh. And in honor, for us to understand that, we must understand what an aggregate or the composition that composes a certain degree ingredient that it may make certain things strong. And so there are 12 profound pillars, uh, and I will express unto us that we may understand what an aggregate is. In order for you to make concrete, you just cannot use cement. You must use lime, you must use rock. It must be of a certain degree of certain material. And those are the aggregate of the composition of that which is compiled together that will produce the strength and the hardness uh, of concrete. Everything in life uh, is of that nature. And there are, and there is, there are aggregate of Yah 
that which is of composition, material, wisdom, spiritual things uh, that produce a strength in the bosom of Yisrael that when the gates of hell began to approach and encroach upon, uh, there's a great strength. And there's a power and a resolve that no power in hell can reduce it down to rubbles. And if we understand the very agony of Eob and the strength of his wisdom and the knowledge of his faithfulness even unto Yah in his trials, we will understand the beauty of the agonet or the composition, the compositives of what it takes to establish the greatest of pillars in our lives that all of the pillars of Yah or these agrets uh, are the strength of the two most pronounced pillars uh, in the kingdom of Yah. I want to read that from Yeshaya Isaiah 9, 7. I want to read that again. Hallelujah. It says in Yeshaya chapter 9, verse 7, it talks about the marith or the increase, uh, the greatness, the strength uh, of his kingdom, or the greatness of his mishra, the government. And the government of Yah is established upon that pronounced twelve pillars uh, of foundational truth. You will never understand that without the wisdom of Torah. You must understand Torah, that's why the enemy has been so diligent in his effort to, to teach us something that denounces the power of Torah. We're talking about a kingdom power. We're talking about a kingdom that, uh, that the opposition of hell uh, cannot overthrow. We're talking about a kingdom power. We're not talking about talk. He also says of the increase of his kingdom, uh, the greatness, the power of his kingdom, uh, there shall be no gates, it shall never end. There shall be nothing to destroy it. It will not be abandoned because the strength of that kingdom, the aggregate of that kingdom, that which is the composition, the composited material, the ingredients to cause the great two to stand, then there is nothing that can destroy it. To bring it down, there is no demolition or force that can bring it down. So it begins with the increase of his kingdom. It says that uh, of the government of Yah and the shalom, there shall be no end. There shall be no end to the shalom of the power of his kingdom growth and manifestation in the bosom of Yisra'ya. If it's the kingdom that is established upon the principles of Almighty Yahweh. It must be established that way. It cannot be established on grandmother's religion. No? Cannot be established on granddaddy's and mama's precepts and concepts of Yah. It must be established upon the increase of this kingdom, of this Mishra, of this government, this power of dominion to rule over the empires, the empires of darkness, the empire of oneself. There's a great power. It never decreases. It always increases. And we should go from a moon to a moon, from a moon to a moon, from faith to faith. That there's a great resolve in us, Yisra'ya, because uh, at the present of everything we do, there is a pronounced spirit. And that is the Ruach of judgment and justice. Without that, we are going to crumble into the darkness of hell. He says, there shall be no end upon the throne or his kiss, the, his authority or power of David, and upon his milchut. He is going to order it, or whom it's going to be established with the firmness of the Torah of Omar Yah. It shall be a stable kingdom. We are not unstable. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. 
It shall not be an unstable kingdom, but he shall hoon. It shall be established upon the twelve principles uh, of the foundation of power, the aggregate of Almighty Yah. It is only revealed through the power and testimony of Yoshua HaMashiach, and one must have the empowering uh, of the Ruach HaKodesh. We must have the life of Yah's truth in us. When we hear that name, we come alive. When truth is uttered, it calls us to rejoice. When its beauty is revealed, it calls us to dance and to sing of the greatness of our body. We have not reached that stage. We are our own impediments. We are the one that impedes us. There's no one else that impedes you. You can't blame it on someone else. You're wicked because you are wicked. You are selfish because you are selfish. You are unconcerned because you flat out do not give a damn. You never progress because you are arrogant and you are wicked, you are haughty and you are full of pride. Pride always goes before a fall. And because you are haughty, everything you lay your hands to is destructive because you will not allow the mishmatim the judgment of Yah to correct you. He says, upon this kingdom, he's going to order it. And then he says, now when I order this kingdom, don't worry. I will, so add, I will sustain it by a living Torah. He is the one that sustains the kingdom. He says, I will establish it. It shall stay it shall be a kingdom of my uprightness. It shall be strength. I will so add. He said, I will establish it. Do you hear that? He established it with Mishpatim. There is no kingdom power in us that is established or so add. That we sustain ourselves in the walk of Yah without judgment. That's why we are a generation that hates judgment. That's why the elderly gets foolish when you judge them. And they will begin to compare themselves with others. Well, what about them? I'm talking to you, you wicked swine of hell. He always established the power of his kingdom with judgment. You cannot establish anything. You cannot go and build a foundation, a building, without judging the terrain. You must judge every matter. You cannot do it, Yisrael. He said, I was so out. My kingdom, my melchut, it will be established in the hearts of the people. I shall so out, I shall sustain it. It shall be strengthened and it shall be alive through one component. There are two great things. He said, it shall be done by judgment. He said, by judgment, we must understand the aggregate or the composited material to understand the strength of judgment. I'll show us what an aggregate is in scripture, not some kind of book learning by these fools that everyone is writing. We have enough in this book, in this book to sustain us throughout the walk. He says, not only that it shall be established, it shall be supported. Uh, he said, it shall be sustained with judgment. This shall be your comfort. You shall be strengthened with the judgment, with judgment. Uh, he says, and also with sadaqah, with justice. It shall be of my righteous attribute. Well, how do we understand that? We know that his righteousness... Uh, is an everlasting righteousness and his Torah, his righteousness is Torah. His righteousness is the law to govern us uh, that we may please him. His righteousness is to open the door for Yisrael to come in uh, that we will be without any excuse at all. He said, these shall be the two. He says, judgment and justice. He says, and from 
this time forth or from hence for even olam viat forevermore, the zeal of Yah of Saba will perform this. It is the strength the word Saba means. He that is in command of the military might of the Hashemayim, of the heavens. He that orders uh, the hosts of the heavens. Uh, he is the great one of Saba. He is the one of hosts, Yisraeli. So he is the one that hosts the kingdom. When one hosts a gathering uh, in the house, uh, they are the ones that make sure that everything is supplied. Uh, he has supplied everything. He gives us two. Two. It's amazing that he says two. These two things. That everything shall be established. Everything shall be kun, it shall be so'at, it shall be sustained, it shall not falter. And I shall send you a great witness of that. It's one thing, may I read this, turn quickly to Metitia. I want to show you something and then we'll proceed from here. In the book of Matthew, we must understand the sure pillars, the aggregate. What Yah has spoken collectively, that we gather through the power of wisdom and understanding that we may build the right house. We cannot build the house on foundation that is not sure. Your sure says here in Matitia 22, uh, verse 40, he says unto the young lawyer and the one that was jurus uh, and one that had the jurisprudence uh, but did not have the wisdom uh, of the jurisprudence. He says unto him, uh, on these two commandments, Matitia 2240, he says on these two agri, on these two, uh, he says, Salah or hang. This is what it clings to. This is what the kingdom of Yah clings to. Judgment and justice. And the pillars of Yah strengthens judgment and judgment. The wisdom of Yah, the understanding of Yah, the fear of Yah, the ruachim of Yah, they sustain and strengthen judgment and justice. The Torah is a book of judgment. Mishpatim. And it is all in the strength of justice. It is Sadiq. It is Sadiq. Yeshua says upon these two commandments, upon judgment and justice, upon these two commandments, he says, Tala, this is what, this is what the promises of Yah, this is what the power of Yah's Torah, it clings to all the Torah and the Navim. He said, the prophets, what they taught, what the Torah says, this is what it clings upon. Where a man loves judgment, he loves truth. He is a man that is Audible, he is uh, faithful in his regard in all things to Almighty Yahweh. That's why people say, I don't judge. Well, I am one that judge. I am one that judge. And I began at Yah's Bayat. If I know that destruction uh, and the annihilation of the people began first with us, uh, where shall the wicked and those that are not uh, wise of the Torah of Yahweh, where shall they appear? Where shall they appear? So it begins with that foundational principle. You're honest with you to judge you, and you do it with justice. You don't do it with hypocrisy, with the aggregate of your, the worldly wisdom. You do it with all justice. Well, let me show you what Yoshua was talking about in verse 37 of the same chapter. Yoshua said to this young lawyer, he says, you shall love Yah. You're about with all your love. And with all your nefesh, with your entire leba, with all of your mind. He said, and the second one is like unto it. The second. Judgment is just like justice. 
To love Yah is just like what? Uh, you shall love your uh, or your neighbor as yourself. You should consider those that are close by you. Uh, you shall love them like you love yourself. And then he said upon these two commandments. This is what the kingdom of Yah hinge upon. Uh, judgment uh, and justice. Without that you have no power of kingdom in you. Without judgment and justice, uh, you are a deceived, uh, facetious, lying, uh, wicked child of hell. Uh, when you do not judge righteously, when you do not judge yourself righteously, there are no aggregates of Yah in your life. You have no pillars of strength. Uh, you are a deceitful liar. You're full of your own damnable wickedness. Uh, and you're going to die that way, Yisrael. You do not confront the wickedness of the issues of your own heart. And when your injustice of judging me uh, is so far from your justice uh, of judging you, uh, you are a wicked man. You are a vile woman. You are unclean. You are a Jezebel out of hell. You can't build nothing of great strength without the proper materials. You need the aggregate of Yah to understand the power to build a kingdom. His kingdom shall always increase. The power of that wisdom shall grow expeditiously in our minds. And we look like some dumb jackasses. I said, I'm not going to stop saying the elderly men, they are so immature today. They don't have a damn thing. Give them something silly. They like that. Wise man loves another wise man. And the strength of a wise man, he will listen to a man that's wiser than him. There are men wiser than you, my friend. What about you? You're not wiser than me. How about that? You see, because it's already opened the door of your own pride that you think you're wiser. The times I listen to people, I go out and hold the word. And the individual that Lode said, he talks to me all the time about, quote, his Jesus, his Lord, and his God, unquote. So I know how to deal with him. I said to him, quote, you were testifying about your Lord, sir, to that man. Were you not? Oh, he gets excited. I don't waste my energy and the time because I have something that is important to me. That we have sufficient wood to stay warm uh, during the winter. So I'm not going to waste time trying to confront him or convince him. Because I'm not going to convince him. Even the most high. If he cannot convince you. If he did not convince you. My words will never convince you. It's only that when you hear the pronunciation of that or the profoundness uh, and the pronouncing of it uh, it caused to come alive what he had put in there from the birth of your conception yeah. these are the two commandments upon these hinge inshallah the entire principles of Yah the Torah is a book of judgment. The Torah is a book of justice. Yoshua is the living Torah. You can only be revealed, it can only be revealed by the Ruach, by the mind of Yah. Because it is not comprehensible to the natural mind. A natural mind is enmity, there is a hatred uh, against Torah. It will not subject itself unto the simplicity of Torah because it's looking for something that is uh, much more dynamic and I am not dynamic, neither are you. Uh, he that made us is dynamic uh, and he that made us understand the dynamic uh, composition or the aggregate uh, of a body. It's amazing that when a baby is born, that a child has somewhat 300 plus bones in their bodies. 350. 
And as we grow and mature, it is reduced down to around 225 bones. And yet as a child, the aggregate and the bones that were needed to make sure this is strengthened and that. As we grow, the bones mature. We become stronger. We become more vibrant. We become the essence of strength. Whereby you make sure the aggregate are there for the child that the child may grow and may not grow with deformity. If you understand, and because we have not allowed the aggregates of Yah in our lives, we have grown with deformity. We're deformed, our minds are deformed, our actions are deformed, we have no sensitivity. We don't even know what consideration of love is. We're silly as they come. We're just silly. And we don't want to think of ourselves that way. I'm going to teach my friend. And make sure you learn something today. Hallelujah. Hear this, Yisrael. Hear this. I'm dealing with the two again. Can I ask us a question? There was one by the name of Shim Shun. We say Samson. That he was in the house of the Philistine. And the Torah says that he did not find three pillars, he found two. When you destroy the pillar of judgment and justice, you're a wicked man, you're a wicked woman. When you don't judge yourself, there is no kingdom power in you. It says that Shumshun, he found his place between the two royal powers uh, of the kingdom of darkness, the defiance of Torah, the denouncing of Yah, and the establishment of their own gods. And our God has become our belly, our own greed, our own wicked selfishness. These are not the aggregates of Yah. This is not the aggregate of Yah. This is the aggregate of the world. This is what the world is consumed with. And he found himself between those two strong pillows. And the only way he could bring them down because of his faithful commitment on, uh, to the judgment of Yah because Yah judged him. And Yah was just in his judgment. And because he received that, he received his strength. He received the renewing of his power that he was able to bring down the kingdom of hell. And that is the only way, Yisrael. We are going to receive our eye and our sight. We began to love the power of Yah's judgment. Who are you to judge? I judge you. I don't give a damn. You don't have to be around me. Hold on for a second. This is what Shaul says here. Quickly, Romans, Romeo, Romans. I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 5. I want to read this quickly. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. One verse I want to read. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 12. Shaul says, for what have I to do? To judge them also. You think I don't have the power to judge them that are without? That are in without knowledge of Torah? Without the wisdom of Torah? He said, do not you judge them that are within? If you make an assessment of those that are close by you, you think I can't judge that uh, that are outside or those that are without the knowledge of Yah? He says in the next verse, but them that are without Yah judgeth. You don't understand the judgment of Yah. He is not going to allow his kingdom uh, to be brought down. He said, therefore, you put them away from among yourself, uh, them that are wicked, though that wicked person. Uh, well, what is wicked? Your own damn heart is wicked and deceitful above all things. The heart is desperately wicked. And deceitful above all things. Who can know it? You don't think your heart is that way. But you think that someone else's heart is that way. You don't want to judge that which was within. Yah says, I'm going to judge you, Jezebel. 
You don't judge your own heart. You don't judge that which is right. And you do what you do, that which was up, you do with such injustice. You have no sadaqah. You have no characteristics of Yah. That's why you do it. And you walk wicked like a Jezebel. You walk into every kind of unclean spirit. Your mind is not stable. Your heart, there is no end to the government, the Mishra of your Shua Hamashiach, but the administration of the Ruach HaKodesh in the lives of Yisra'ya. He said, you think I'm not going to judge? He said, yeah, those that are already without, Yah has already judged them. You think we're getting by, we think we're getting by. You're not getting by. You're not getting by. The aggregate, that composited truth that makes up the strength of Yah's pillars. In order for you to understand that, you have to understand this. It says here in the book of Mishli, Proverbs. Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 1. There's another verse I want to touch on the 2, all right? And the 12. It's important. Because there are those that think that they're wise, they understand the intricates or the aggregate of Yah's house. You just go there, Proverbs 9, 1. I want to read this. It's a garden with the two, all right? I want to read this. It's in Jeremiah. I'll just write it down and you can go back and look at it. Jeremiah chapter 52, verse 20. He, he, here he's talking about the very bed of Yah, the, the great strength of Yah's house. Jeremiah 52, 20. Are we not, uh, is not your body the, uh, the bed of Yah? Is it not Yisrael Yah? He says uh, the two pillars... Uh, you see, judgment and justice. There are two pillars that should be erected in our hearts continuously. He said the two pillars, uh, one see, uh, and then he talks about the twelve brazen uh, baka, or the twelve brazen oxen. Uh, and what that implies, uh, that there were twelve brazen oxen, or brass oxen in the house of Yah. That represents the very strength of Yah. And the oxen represents the power to bear the burden. And the oxen represents the one that are burden bearers and strong. And there is nothing that will impede the kingdom power and the kingdom strength. The jackass generation is dumb. And each one of those 12 oxen that represent uh, the pure government of a house, uh, the 12 tribes uh, of Yisraya, they were molded and they were shaped uh, and they were put in the house of Yah. No damn image. Uh, no one worship it. Stupid generation. We don't want to call ourselves stupid. He said there were two pillars of and one sea and 12 brazen bulls. He says that were under the basis which king of the Melech Shalomo had made in the house of Yah. Did he make it in the house of Almighty Yahweh? Sure, that's where it was. The brass of all these vessels, he did not spare anything. They were without weight. They were so heavy. They were without any value. They were so rich and so powerful. So why is it without weight? Because we're without weight to Yah. His kingdom value or the kingdom power in us, uh, it is of great weight. Of the increase of his government, there shall be no end. And we just get richer and richer and wiser and wiser with understanding and understanding the yare, the fear, the power of the ruach. There should be no end to our growth. And even when death sees upon us, when we see death, uh, it becomes a great delight, a half aid in the sight of Yah, the death uh, of one of his Yisraelite Hiroshima. Because the government is sound, the pillars or the aggregate of the pillars of uh, justice and judgment, uh, it is sound in the bosom of Yisraya. You know sound because you have taken uh, the necessary approach uh, to eradicate your mind and your life of the damn nida, the filthiness. Hallelujah. It causes you to respond the way you do and to act the way you do and the things you do. You know it's wicked. Hallelujah. Your heart is deceitful. It's desperately cries for wickedness. Hell, we don't know how to be kind because we don't judge our own corruption of kindness. 
Hell, you don't know how to be sweet because you don't judge that corrupt thing you call sweetness. It's not sweet. It's vile. It's a vile odor in the nostrils of Yah. We don't consider that. Because we are upstanding and, and outstanding citizenry of the kingdom. We'll fool ourselves, Yisra'ya. And I'm not going to fool myself. The two, the two, you understand? The Abba and the Son is Ichat, it's one. It is the Ru'ach Hacho, that's the power of the mind of Yah, the life of his mind. That is what the Ru'ach is. It is the life of his mind that produces uh, the aggregate, the mind of wisdom, the mind of understanding, and the power of Yah's fear, and what it brings to our lives. And if we study each of the dynamics of the aggregate of Yah, we will understand. In order for me to get a, uh, establish a pattern in our minds, uh, I want to take us to Proverbs, uh, Mishli chapter 9, verse 1. It says, Hukma, or wisdom, uh, has built her house. So when you build a house, unless you, uh, unless you weigh out the labor and the cause, uh, you're going to build one in vain, are you not? So wisdom has erected her house. Uh, it is said, this is what wisdom has done. Uh, she has hashab. Uh, she has hewed out uh, her seven pillars. There are seven pillars of wisdom uh, that she has hewn out. In order for you to build a house as a wise man, you must have the aggregate or the seven pillars of wisdom. What are they? Well, we look for things uh, that are beyond our ability to comprehend. Uh, but it's simple and easy. It is not something that is tough to understand. Uh, it is not beyond the reach of your understanding and wisdom. Uh, if you ask men what that is, uh, tell me the seven pillars of Yah. They can't tell you a damn thing. 99.9% .9 of them cannot even, they, they don't even have the wisdom because they have not searched the scripture. I will show you what the seven pillars are. It's hidden in the book. It's hidden in wisdom. And yet we think we're wise men. We think we have the ability to teach. The most powerful thing about my teaching is my activities and my actions. I love to see the ark when they go out. I know they're going to work out. And they can see even in the heat of the sun, already in the beginning of the day, they can see this man laboring. They can see that. They know he is not pretending. They see the labor of this man. They see the sweat of this man. They, they see the activities of this man. Uh, and my salutations are there. Yeah. I don't want them to go out without me saluting them. Yeah. 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 Early the other morning, they knew I was going, but I saw them coming in when I was coming back. Uh, of course, I could see his face. He was driving. I could see his face. And they saw that big truck there. Yellowing down the road and that the cheerfulness of their face. I want you to see me. It's not as much as my talk. It's more about my walk. It's more about my activities. It's not about what I say, it's what I do. It's not how I respond. Nah. It is the fashion of my response. So I want them to see me. I want them to know that their gifts of love are not in vain. That I love them as much as they love me. I want them to see that. If there's anyone here that should motivate us all young and old, uh, when I see this elderly, this Achim Ishtu, when she comes, when I see this old woman among us back here, if anyone can motivate you young and old, it should be that, that old woman. And don't get crazy with me, old woman. I will break your back and you know I will. It should be her. But because you're full of damn pride, and you arrogant as hell. Yeah. She won't. You know my akshimri that time you say preacher man. You ready? Of course I'm not ready. I get like Brother Lindsay. I want to hide from you. Your father would hide from me. And of course he will call say you ready preacher. I've seen this old woman and her activities. 
And she has simply motivated me. Now see, let's roll. I may look up and I see this old woman from my office and I say, oh, well, I know what the deal is. We don't have that kind of judgment of ourselves to offer up or esteem others higher than ourselves. It's sad. It is so damn wicked and sad. You don't have anything. I'm not going to esteem you. I will tell you what it takes to get there. You began to judge yourself. You'll get there. And you do it with justice. You think your justice of judging others is right? Then let my justice of judging you, let that be right. Listen to this in Michele. Uh, God, it says, wisdom has built her bed, her house, her dwelling. Uh, there are aggregates of wisdom she has performed. She, is, she has uh, established the pillars of Yah's great strength. Uh, and everything in the book of Michele from the beginning, you will see how wisdom judge uh, and how wisdom speaks of its, uh, of its justice, uh, or it speaks of the mind of Yah's justice uh, and his judgment. Now, there are seven profound pillars to wisdom. She has hewn them. And we must, by the pillar of judgment and the pillar of justice, we must shape and form the aggregate or the pillars of Yah's great kingdom strength, of his government in our mind, Yisrael. Well, what are the seven pillars of wisdom? It's not something that we think it is. It's so simple that even a fool like me, an unlearned, uneducated Nicopoon can understand. A God tells me what those pillars are in the book of James. James chapter 3. James chapter 3 and verse 17. It says this. These are the seven pillars of Yah. James chapter 3 verse 17, but the wisdom that is from above, uh, the first strength or the aggregate of the pillar of wisdom, uh, it is first pure. It is Tahoe. There is no pretense. Uh, there is no foreignness with wisdom. Uh, it is clean. It is pure. It is just. Uh, it is wise. Uh, it is full of Yahshua. It is, first of all, it is pure. And then as the kingdom of Yahshua established upon the pillar of judgment and justice, uh, there shall be no end to the shalom. Uh, then it is shalom. It is full of peace. These are the seven human pillars of wisdom. Uh, it is full of shalom, and then it's gentle. We're not that gentle, are we? We're not that gentle. Then it is gentle. See, we don't think that that's a great aggregate to have. It is gentle. And not only is it gentle, it is easy to be intrigued. You understand what that means? Easy to be intrigued. It's not what you think it means. It means that it's ready to shemak, to obey when the ears hear. It is a willingness to obey. When one is easily intrigued, they hear, they obey, and they do it righteously. It doesn't fight and resist. And we are resisting people. That's a sign that we don't have the kingdom of his power in us. There are no pillars of strength in us. You understand? It's easy to be intrigued. It's easy. It obeys willingly. We are people that someone says anything to us. We get, we get upset. We get defiant. We get angry. We want to show them. You don't tell me that's a damn fool. We get mad. No, that's wickedness. You have no pillar of wisdom. You have not hewn out. When someone hew out, it takes a masterful skill uh, to knock off your damn rough edges. When you hew something, uh, you need a hammer and a chisel. You got to work it out. You knock off the rough edges. You get the right size handle. You got to have a battle axe. Hewn. You can't take a dull axe with a piece of teak wood. You got to take something that's sharp. On this damn heart, heart of ours and heart head, you need a two-edged sword on that wicked back. It's easy to be intrigued. 
We go and someone say, they don't worry. I don't care if you don't love me. I frankly don't give a damn. It's easily to be intrigued. There's a readiness to obey from the concept of hearing the word of God. There's a delight in obedience. Someone tell you something, you well, who are you to tell me? That's so stupid. What's wrong with us submitting ourselves unto one another in the fear of Yah? Yeah. I'm not going to listen to my wife. That stupidest cat's dung. You submit, your, you, you, you submit yourself unto that. You think of it with wisdom. Uh, and then you, you bring forth the remedy that she calls, she falls subject unto it. Yeah. She tell you, you need to clean that cut on your arm and let me mollify it. You tell her, no, that's silly. Yeah. She has no power to rule over any man. Yeah. To instruct him in the powerful nuances of Yah in Scripture. And call herself his teacher. She is wrong. Period. I don't care how ignorant he is. I don't care if he can't read or write. He has sensitives. And he has the ability to sense what is right and what is wrong. And that's a fact. Leave that alone. Hallelujah. These are the, heel, the pillars that wisdom has hewn out. You need the, the perfection of spiritual uh, uh, gravity. You need to be grounded in the spiritual laws of Yah. That's why we are nutty as fruitcake. Yes. That's why Yisrael Yah is sick the way it is. Uh, fruity and nutty without wisdom, without understanding. They have hewn out pillars. Uh, and if you read in the book of James, uh, it will tell you what the wisdom of this world is uh, in that same chapter. She is easy to be intrigued. Uh, and she is full of ruachim, full of mercies, full of kindness. A man's kindness, you see it on his face. A beautiful bath of tizai on her words express that. Full of it. Not partial, but full of it. We're full of dung. We're not full of this. Don't tell me you have the wisdom of Yah. Don't tell me you have hewn out the, you've allowed the seven pillars to be hewn in your heart. And it says of tough or excellent fruit. Does it say fruit or fruit? Fruit. And we know what the fruit of the Ruach of Yah is. And Shaul tells us that. Love and imuna and kindness. Hell, we're not kind. That's why our kingdom is crumbling. And that's why you, you join with kingdoms that are against Yah. And that's why you solidify your strength uh, by joining with weak kingdoms as the kingdoms of the Torah would join themselves to overtake the kingdom of Yah. But th that's not going to be. They never could. Uh. They never could. So you join yourself unto unsavory kingdoms, uh, unsavory mythology, and you speak on things you are not speak on uh, because you're immature. It is full of. It is full of. We're full of dung. We're full of lies. We're full of folly. We're full of cloudism. Uh, we're full of our anger, of our hostility. Hell, you can see that on the face of people. We full of our self righteousness and our own damn self pity. That's just a fact. And our own self grandizing uh, approach to who I am. These are the seven pillars that have been hewn by wisdom. And what a wise man, when you hear man talk, uh, if he has not these hewn pillars, uh, he doesn't have a damn thing. When one is clownish and laughter and everything is associated with a giggle when it comes to the ways of Yah, he has not, she has not uh, the pillars of strength. I don't care who it is. Can I read a little further? She is full of Ruachim, Ruachim, and she is full of tough fruit. And look at this the pillars or the human pillars, it is without partiality. So I will respect her more than I respect her or her or her. There's something different for her than for you and you and you. You think that's the case? Well, she will let you know that my standard is much more 
tenacious than what I put on us in here. That's just a flat out lie which she gets by with this. No, you're the one that's getting by with your corruption, your lies, and your hypocrisy. You are the one that's getting by with your own corruption uh, because you've hidden it uh, in a cesspool of darkness uh, of your own wicked heart. And not only that, uh, it is one thing about wisdom uh, or the one of the pillars of wisdom, it is without hypocrisy. It is not false. For me to say I love my ark and I care for him and then I do in such a surmising way, that's a damn hypocrite. It is without hypocrisy. When a man has the hewn pillars of Yah's wisdom, uh, he is not a hypocrite. He is not a pretender. He is real. She is real. Her actions, her activities are real. You have not the hewn pillars of Yah. And that's a fact. You don't have that. You have a religious sensitivity. That's why you get upset. That's why we don't like this shooting straight from Torah. No, I'm not shooting straight from the hip. I'm coming straight from Torah. Wisdom has hewn, has hashab. It has cut out. It has hewn. It's seven pillars. The aggregate of wisdom. These are the pillars of the strength of wisdom uh, that is exemplified in a man, a woman's life, uh, when you know that they are wise. You know that they are wise because there are seven pillars uh, of wisdom. These are the aggregate of wisdom. You will see this personified. It speaks with great volume. You don't see one looking like a damn fool and uh, the ones uh, I will show us uh, the aggregate of Yah in the face of a man. I will show you what Torah says, all right? Uh, we don't want Yah to correct us. That's his counsel. That's why he judges us. Let me hold there for a moment. I'll get back to Yaakov. There's a verse I want to read in the book of Yeshaya, Isaiah, chapter 5. Hallelujah. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 22 quickly. This is us. This is Yisrael. He said, this, but this people, Isaiah, Yeshaya, chapter 5, 23, but this people have a revolting and a rebellious heart our love our mind rebel against you have a revolting and rebellious heart they are all revolted they have revolt and they have all gone astray this is a people whose heart rejects Yah it does not love Yah and it has no great I'm sorry I read what, what was that I read Yeremiah I wanted Jer uh, Isaiah. Where do I want? Yeah, Isaiah, I mean, Jeremiah 5.23. This is our problem here. This is one of the aggregate, aggregate of our heart. We are people that were rebellious. Our heart is rebellious. Uh, and we have revolted against the most high Yisrael. We have rejected all he said. Why have we done that? Why? Why are we that way? Yeah, help us to understand. Because we are a generation... That is without understanding. We are people that's without understanding. We have no wisdom. We have no pillars of Yah. Shirak says this. Hold where you are in, in, in Mishli. But Shirak says this. I find it to be very profound. Shirak 620. Write it down. Shirak 620. It says wisdom or she. Wisdom is now. There are you that will think that I'm very cruel. There are those that will say, Reach has heart love. That's so silly. There are you that think that I'm insensitive. There are you that think that I'm not uh, caring or tender. But this is what Shirak says. Uh, in Shirak 620, I want you that have it turned there. You need to hear it. It says, uh, she, uh, and Shirak is expressing uh, the great pillars uh, or the Amun, or the Amuds, uh, the Matseba, the strengths of wisdom. Uh, 
He says, wisdom, she is very harsh and unpleasant to the unlearned. When a man is ignorant and unlearned, they think that you are harsh. Because he speaks above your juvenile wisdom. So when a man that is a learned man, when he speaks to an unlearned man, the wisdom, the pillars of Yah's wisdom, the aggregate of wisdom, he thinks that he is harsh. He thinks that it is tough. He is so harsh that it is so insensitive. Listen. He that is without understanding uh, will not remain with her. So a man without understanding, they don't love wisdom. Uh, a daughter without understanding, uh, without being out, the ability to discern, uh, to understand the power of what is right, uh, you won't stay with wisdom long. So they will say that Reach is harsh. His words are harsh because you are unlearned. You don't know a damn thing. You are ignorant. And so you think that the wise speech of Yah is harsh. Well, he didn't have to say that. What would you have said, uh, hypocrite? The wisdom of Yah is without partiality or hypocrisy. How do you speak to your damn wicked son uh, uh, and you embrace him uh, and you can't even embrace a man of God or daughter of Tizion, you're a damn hypocrite. You're wicked as hell. You vile, wicked mammy, your papa, you got this great uh, uh, beloved for them uh, and you don't give a damn about Yisraya. Go to hell. So when that is unlearned, they think a wise man, he's harsh. Uh, that's all you need to understand. You need to develop that in your heart. Yeah. And once you understand that, you can understand the profound things of Yah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, he's harsh. Oh, I'm going to do with the aggregates or the aggregate of wisdom. But I want to read something else quickly. Hallelujah. It says here in the book, you need to hear this. In the book of Romeo. Hallelujah. Let me read this quickly. Romeo chapter 1. One verse here, maybe two. Romeo. Hallelujah. Let me just look at verse Romeo chapter 1. I want to look at one verse here and then I'm going to, I want to move to the verse I want to. Verse 29. It says, being filled with all unrighteousness. Our minds are filled with every kind of unrighteousness there is. He said, being filled with all unrighteousness. And because of that, in verse 31, you can read everything between that. It says this in verse 31. He says, they are without, that is I in. There's nothing there. Have you ever heard someone say, I looked into that man's face and there was nothing there? I looked in that woman's face and there was nothing, no life, no love. They were cold. And people don't understand what's reflected in their minds. Uh, is reflected in their countenance. And this is a dumb jackass generation. Men, you can't tell that. Uh, they don't try to change the concept of that mind. Uh, because they're without understanding. This is a generation I in. There is no wisdom of the Torah of Yah. There are no pillars uh, of this wisdom hewn. They don't try to hewn it out. Uh, you got to work on something to hew it. Uh, you got to work diligently to hew that pillar into shape. You got to work on your mind. You got to work on you to get you into shape. You got to stop that bullshit thing. Trying to work on someone else. You need to work on you man. Woman, you need to work on your wickedness and your damn greed. Don't tell nobody else what others are doing. What are you doing with your wicked Jezebel mind? From house to house and everybody's damn business. Running your damn mouth. Shut your damn mouth. Stay at home. Clean your damn nasty house. I don't take nothing back. How about that? You get you clean and beautiful. Let me say this to us. I will. Toda, my friend. 
I've gone out with the little one several times. It's amazing how people are just drawn onto the, the little girls, their beauty, their dress. They're innocent. See, unless you become like one of them, you're not going into the kingdom. And I have seen it too many times, the times I've taken them, how people gravitate. Oh, they're so beautiful. Now, if they can recognize that in little ones, they should be able to recognize that in us. They don't understand what they're seeing. Can I say this to you all? Listen to me. I'm not trying to be harsh. If these babies were all big and out of shape, in fact, no one, they would, they would mock them, wouldn't they? That's why they mock us. Because spiritually, we're out of shape. We are peculiar people. We're different. And people marvel. They don't know what they're marveling at, but they do. You all think when I say that, oh, he think he's a fine. I know I'm not something damn fine. You may think you are. I'm his. And I know this old body stinks. You go home, pull it through there, and see what it smells like, all right? And I don't even use the old rent. Maybe once a week if I use it. Twice at the max. Never! I don't even use it. I don't use it. No, I don't smell like that. I just don't use it. Forget, just don't use it. And people watch us and we, we don't understand what they're looking at. We think they're looking at because we think we're fine. Stop that. I'm getting grow every day. My, I got, stop it. We were in the store the other day and I could sense this woman. She, I could sense her just watching. Of course, I didn't look at him. So I said to my Isha, you sit here. And my Isha, the woman watching me, and she's watching the woman, she says to me, I watch how that woman just constantly watching and looking up and down. And so the woman had to find a way to approach me. And I wanted to say, Jezebel, get out of my face. Get away. Usually when I look at people, a woman of the day had her dog in the store. And the dog come right up on me and she said, come back, Rafi. And I turned and I just looked at her. That's all I did. Hell, that was enough. She made sure Rafi stay by the side. I'm like, your dog may be your favor. I don't want your dog touching me. I just looked at her. I just turned and looked at her. Just like that. I knew that that would change your attitude. So this heifer, if she did not think that she was the sexiest woman in town, you couldn't tell her she was not that. You couldn't tell that old hag. <clears throat> and so I, I sensed this crazy thing. She didn't know what she was looking at. She didn't. And I'm telling you this because people don't understand. The Torah says that David was ruddy. He had a beauty that was beyond what even his father could see. But Yah could. And Shemuel Yah said, this is the one right here. I'm not impressed because someone lusting or have the sensual appetite. That's filthiness. I, that doesn't impress me. But I'm saying to myself, this woman doesn't even know what she's looking at. She doesn't understand. So I stand with great, with an air, a disposition, a strength. And I want her to know I'm a strong man. She sure did. An air. So she found some way to approach me. I said, this, her question was so damn silly. It was just a silly question. I just looked at her. Well, it's not what many would give themselves over to think. It's just like the people watch the babies and say, oh, they, they don't know what they're seeing. That woman didn't know what she was seeing. She didn't know what she was seeing. No, she did not. She didn't even understand that. I did, but she did not. We are people that the light of his Torah should shine more excellent unto the coming day of Yahshua HaMashiach. Our light should shine, Yisraya. That the world may see the power of our identity. And they will give honor unto our Abba. 
It's not happening with us. And we don't want to deal with the fact that it's not happening with us. We want to promote our wicked flesh. We want to baptize Zion. When she began to resonate with that beauty of Yah, then uh, even men, their eyes will be drawn not for some kind of corrupt reason. Because there's a beauty there. It's a beauty that cannot be expressed. They can only look, Yisraya. So I'll give them something to look at. Whether I got all dirty blue jeans in my boots. Or whether I, I, I feel myself a little uh, fresh today, if I may use that. That ignorant woman didn't know what she was looking at. She did not. It makes no difference. You understand? Has nothing to do with one's pigmentation of one's skin. And by the way, she was a white girl. You understand? I knew where her wicked heart was. She didn't know who she was dealing with. You understand? We are a peculiar people. We are people that's different. We need the aggregate of the pillars of wisdom. We need to allow what Yah says to heal us and work on us. We don't allow that. Our arrogance won't allow that. And so when we stand in the marketplace, uh, when the elderly men go places, they stand in the marketplace, people will say, I don't care about one's physical stature. It means nothing. One doesn't have to have muscles that are protruding out of his shirt. He got on something so tight, he didn't even know how he got it on. A woman got on something so tight that everything about her is revealed. Uh, there's a beauty that exemplifies the beauty uh, of the fragrance of Yah that is greater than that. Uh, and you see it in the pornim in the face of uh, one another. There's a beauty that is expressed there. It's almost like someone will appreciate their job that you can see that expression in their face. And when we appreciate Yah, you will see that we don't have this damn uh, dumb looking humdrum look on us. Uh. And that's a fact. We don't have to dress to appease some attention or, or draw attention onto us. Uh, it's the beauty of the dynamics of the pillars of our life. You go somewhere, you see beautiful columns uh, or a building, you look at that thing. Uh. It is the strength and the fortitude of our character and the power of the testimony of Yahshua. And it is my revelation of the Ruach HaKodesh. We look all dumb and drooping our damn mouths open and our hearts are somewhere beside Yah. We look silly as hell. Grow up, man. Dress yourself, woman. Mature up. Quit always making excuses. I, may, I have no excuse. None. I don't get what you say. My Israel can never tell you that I got an excuse or complain. Never. The seven pillars of Yah, they're without hypocrisy. Without, does it say that without hypocrisy? Did I not just read in Romans? it says in verse 31, without, without understanding? Is it not the same word I read in Romans 131? It's the people without understanding. Now look what it says in verse 32. Who knowing the judgment of Yah, and they that commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but they have pleasure in them that do it. You have pleasure in those that defy the Torah of Yah. You delight. No, listen, not only do you not do them or you do them, but you got great pleasure in those that defy the ordinance of Yah. You take great delight in their presence uh, because they defy the Torah of Yah. We don't understand the book, Yisrael. There is an aggregate to the seven pillars of Yah's wisdom. And without these aggregate or this aggregate, you have no wisdom of Yah. I don't care how you misquote a Katuva. And you speak as though you're speaking with those that are as simple as you and know as little as you know. And those that do not take time to refresh themselves in Torah. And so you can boast with them, but you cannot go to a wise man or, or a Gerber, a warrior of Yah, and talk that same way because he will shut you down. And same thing with the daughters of Tizayon. 
You like older women like to be around a young women, a young women because and they don't teach them a damn thing. The beauty of an elderly says, I don't care. I don't care. No mother teach her daughter to be a whore. No mother teach her daughter to go astray. She has labored, she has put essence in that, and she has done right, and she's satisfied. Now, if the daughter goes away, same thing with the father. If he goes away, woe unto them. Woe unto them, Yisraya. And so Yah gives us elderly men and women among us to teach us. Uh, it's by the beauty of the aura that teach us more than anything. Uh, it is their walk, not your damn talker. Uh. It is the purity of their judgment and their justice. No, you're wrong. He's right. No, no, you're wrong, man. You're wrong, woman. You're wrong, wife. Well, she did. No, it's you, wife, you hypocrite. You're a coward of an individual, even if your wife is right to let her blame someone, that she doesn't get, le get learning out of blaming someone else. I have never allowed my to do that. Talk so I can hear you. Okay then. Always someone else. No, it's you, hypocrite. You have the wisdom of yours without partialities, without hypocrisy. You have no wisdom. I, I, I got to deal with the aggregate, or the aggregate of, 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 of the pillars or the kingdom of just judgment and justice. I will tell you what have this Shabbat and yours will next Shabbat. All right. But I give you enough today. If you never hear me speak again, it will bless you. Hallelujah. Let, let me move on. Now, I, I want you to, to I, I want our attention drawn to Psalms, to Helium 19 verse 9. I want you to understand the true pillar. These are the, this is the aggregate of judgment. The true strength of judgment. Psalms chapter 19 verse 9. I want to deal with the aggregate, the composition, the composite materia that gives a true judgment in the heart of Yisrael. It says here in Psalms 19 verse 9, it talks about the Yare, the fear of Yah. It tells us it is tahor, it is pure, it's clean. When one truly has the fear of Yah, we have taught on the seven Ruachim. We have taught here on the seven pillars of wisdom. One of the more Adem, I believe, Sukkot. We taught on that. The Ark One took each one of those pillars. You understand? So these things we ought to know, Yisraya. But it says here uh, that the fear of the Yare, uh, the great honor, the great trembling of Yah, it is clean, it is pure, and this is the strength of it. Uh, it enduring, or there is an olam viad. It is no, uh, it, it is no ceasing of that. When one truly gets the fear of Yah, one does not cease from that. Uh, it endures forever. This is one of the most prominent uh, compositions. Of judgment. He said the Mishpatim of Yah, they are true. The judgment of Yah, they are imat. They are true. They are faithful. They are establishing the firmness of Yah. They are true, Yisra'ya. That is one of the most profound aggregate of judgment. It is true. Am I truthful with me when I judge me? Or I lack the hewn pillars of wisdom in my heart? Or do I speak harshly to an unlearned man who thinks that because my mind is unlearned and the Torah of Yah is learned that I think that Yah is speaking to me harshly? Do I think like that? But it's one thing of the great fire or the composition of judgment. It is true. It is sincere. It is a sure thing, yeah. You can count. It is reliable. It is stable. You can count upon the judgment of Yah because it is true. It is faithful. It is without hypocrisy. It is true. Are we true to ourselves? In my days, there was a statement or a proverb that we would say, just be true to you. Just be true to you. We didn't understand that, but what one was actually saying from the wisdom of Torah, you must judge yourself the way you're judging all your surrounding. You have no kingdom power without the pillar of these two. 
When one has these two, judgment and justice, uh, then they love Yah with everything. That's what the first four deal with. Uh, and they go by the jurisdictions uh, uh, of his judgment. Uh, and then they will love their neighbors as their self because they make assessment uh, of their neighbors in righteousness. Uh, they don't judge them phony with hypocrisy, with partiality. Uh, they do right by them, Yisra'ya. Yeah. So we must be true to ourselves. Uh, and the Mishmatim of Yah, it, there, it is true. Uh, and then look at this. It is, uh, it's judgments of Yah are true. Uh, and then they are sadaqah, they are just. Uh, or they are righteous. Uh, they are righteous. It brings about the administration of judgment, uh, what is right and what is wrong, uh, according uh, to the mandate of Torah. And the Torah is built upon those two pillars. And the Torah expressed to us the aggregate, the composition uh, that mounds up the greatness of God's judgment uh, and his justice. Uh, in his judgment is great love and great kindness. Uh, we don't understand that. That's why this whore has taught us, don't judge. You don't be judge, not that you be judge. That's the truth, yes, Raya. Yeah. But a man has the ruach of Yah, he judge. He begins at the house because he understands where judgment shall be gone. He is constantly judging his house. When a daughter of Tizayan truly loves you, she will judge herself all the time. She will judge herself. She will constantly keep the judgment because she wants to make sure her heart is ruled by his kingdom, by the kingdom laws of Yah. And by those kingdom laws, you will know she's been judged by that because uh, what is the result of that? Uh, there's great shalom. There's fruit in one's life. There's great fruit in their lives. When there is not great fruit, when there is no shalom, they're not, they're not being judged. Uh, they're not being led by the ruach of Yah. They're not being led by the living spirit of His truth. They're not being led by that. And those, and those two aggregate, true, the judgment or imat, truth is firm. It, is, it brings about stability. That's what truth is. We think that that's not the identity of Yah's truth. But Yah's truth is firm. That's why he tells us. To let us know I'm not shuck, bucking, and jiving. You can play all you want to. You can't do your own thing. But I'm real. You can play around all you want to. The cloud is coming in. And there's not going to be time to get ready, Yisrael. Hallelujah. It is righteous and true altogether. The composition of that aggregate, that aggregate, it is all true. It is all together right. So his judgment is altogether right. Well, brother, I think you judge me a little too hard. I'll stop that. You silly and mature man. I've had them say, well, what about to all the brothers? Now I'm dealing with you, man. Don't worry about the other sister. I'm dealing with you, woman. Don't worry about what they're doing. That's your problem. See, you're worrying about what they're doing, and you're not doing what you should be doing. That's not the issue what others are doing. We're dealing with you. You don't appreciate what I do. Well, you don't appreciate what you're doing. Because if you appreciate it, you don't need no one to tell you how much you appreciate it. I appreciate that I can get up and leave. I appreciate that I can work. I appreciate I can sweat. I appreciate that. You all went out the other day. My Isha says to me, Ray Aka, I said to her Thursday night, I'm tired. She said, I, I, I thought, didn't you take a nap? I said, baby girl, I was out all day working. I had to work on my time to take care of things that uh, I can't allow what I want to do for me and be what needs to be done for the community overall. I can't do that. So when you all were out, I said, okay, I can work on my little suit." Zaken Yarame Yaso, he said, that's nice. I like the way that's shaping out. So I was able to work on that. I was able to get some of that done, quite of a bit of it done. Won't be long, I'll be inside. Wait till you see the inside of it. Hallelujah. With all this trash around here, it's what I'm going to use. Don't worry about it, you'll see it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says here that the fear of Yah, we read that, but, but in, in, in Psalms 89 verse 9, we're dealing with the aggregate. We're dealing with that, 
those uh, that which is of composition that when it's gathered together it, it constitute a great strength psalms 89 verse 14 it talks about the foundation it talks about justice and it tells us what the foundation of your is psalms 89 verse 14 it says sadiq justice does it not say that yisrayah did I not read in Yeshaya that, uh, that his kingdom is based upon the principles of judgment and justice? He says, Sadiq, and you know what Sadiq is. Can I explain it in the simplest of way? This is what Sadiq is, the righteousness of Yah. Not trying to use an expression that is beyond our ability to comprehend. It is just simply this, the righteousness of what is right according to Torah. We have judged ourselves according to Torah. We have operated in the validity of the truth of Torah. And the firmness, y'all say, no, you don't do it, you don't do it. And then it has brought about this mind of Yah through the Ruach. It becomes alive. And not only can we carry it out, we can function in it. And it causes great delight in us. So he tells us that in Psalms they read that justice, the Sadiq, the righteousness of Yah's Torah. And then he also says judgment. This is justice and judgment are the habitation of the machun. These are the fixed things or the fixed principles. Uh, this is what established. These are the, the, the habitation. This is the foundation of your throne. See, that's the foundation of the throne of Yah. Justice and judgment. And that is the thing that dethrones us. We don't want justice. We don't want judgment, do we? But that's what the foundation, Yisra'ya, that is the machun, that is the foundation of Yah's kaseh, his throne. That's where he ruled from, from those two principles. And these great pillars, uh, he incorporate the aggregate or the other thing. Here is one right here. He says, Hasita, mercy and truth shall go before your faith. He operates in his faithfulness. That's what his chassid is. It is his faithfulness. It is the kindness of Yah. These are the aggregate that cause the strength of the pillars of Yah to be strong. That these are the supporting pillars of his justice and his judgment. You cannot put one, two pillars or a span that spans in the natural sense, one mile long. It's not going to work. So there are pillars that he has placed and the aggregate of those pillars between uh, that has spanned from the beginning. Judgment with Adam in the beginning. He was just with him in the beginning, even until the end. In the end, there should be judgment uh, and justice. And between each of those spans of the years, uh, a generation, he has placed the aggregate, uh, his love kindness, uh, his tenderness, uh, his mercies, uh, his understanding uh, along the path uh, of that great tunnel and the journey that we are on here. And judgment was there in the beginning and justice and it's going to be there in the end and justice shall be there in the end and that's a fact no doubt about that Yisrael. hallelujah and he says these are the habitation of your throne then he there's a semicolon there he says mercy and truth shall go before your face. This is the hewing or the polishing of the pillar. It is the kindness of Yah. Although we are wretched and wicked. It is the mercies of Yahshua HaMashiach. And the truth of this dynamic power that polish us and wash us and refine us and cleanse us. It is that. It is the power of the Ruach HaChodesh. That first of all show you your wickedness, your sins. Convince you of your sins. And that it may draw us to the well, the fountain of life, that we may allow our hearts to be governed by the truth of Almighty Yah. And that's what goes before the face of Yah, His Chassid, and truth, His Torah. And what is before our face? That's why the world, when they see us, they should see the light of the Torah upon our face. That doesn't mean you're kind because you don't participate in the folly 
I don't participate, never have, even, even when I wasn't even, uh, even when I didn't know truth, I didn't participate in it. There are men that I've met along this way, they could have never, I've been honest, they will never been my partners in the world. I would have never hung with them. They would not, I would even associate, I don't care if they were making $10,000. I would have never dealt with them. I would have never, I would have never walked with them. Never! They could have been my boy. No. No. That's just the way I was. And that's the way I am now. And it's just the truth. Men think that they understand mercies and truth. They don't understand that. These are the aggregate. Here's the pillar of justice in the beginning. The pillar of judgment and the pillar of justice. Here at the end, there's the pillar of justice and the pillar of, uh, uh, of judgment. And we have all of that which has kept this kingdom afloat, the, the aggregate of those great strong pillars of God. Mercies when it needed Love kindness when it, it is needed. All of that, Yisrael, the wisdom of Yah when it's needed. The fear of Yah. You can't build a strong house without pillars. You've got to have foundation. You've got to have the makor. You've got to have a foundation. We must be established in truth, Yisrael. Again, this profound utterance of David uh, to Helium 1, 1975. Uh, and the only thing that uh, the aggregate or the pillars of Yah's wisdom, his truth, uh, the only thing that's going to assure this nation of Yisra'el, yeah, it is one thing that we must know. David 119 verse 75, Psalms to Helium. David says, I yada, I've experienced, I know, O oh, Yah, that your judgments are sadiq. That's the aggregate of judgment. It is just. He said, you've judged me. Listen to what he says. I know your judgments are righteous. They are just. And that your imuna, your faithfulness, uh, your faithfulness, uh, he says, and that you in faithfulness, uh, that you in faithfulness, uh, you have afflicted uh, me. You tell me that Yah in his faithfulness, he has afflicted because of our, his pure judgment that is just, that we will not fall away, away from Almighty Yah. It is faithfulness. He is faithful to his house. And he says to us that my aggregate of faithfulness, it is the great strength of my kingdom. It is a fortified pillar that justice and judgment rest upon it and justice and judgment will never fail never the justice of man fail but the justice of Yah never fail the judgment of man fail but the judgment of Yah never fail it is faithful Yisrael that is one of the aggregates of uh, judgment and justice. Uh, it is faithful. It's not moved by emotions. Uh, it's not moved because you're sick. Uh, you're doubted out. It is still uh, the same. Uh, it shows no partiality. It is not of hypocrisy. It is not going to move for you. You're going to have to move in the justice of Yah and the judgment of Yah. You will, David said, because I'm glad that your faithfulness of the character or the composition of your judgment, you're faithful. That is one of the ingredients or one of the aggregate of, of, of judgment that is faithful. It's faithful. He says, and because of that, you have, Anna, you have uh, afflicted me, humbled me. You have caused me to have this sense of oppression. That's what judgment does. The Torah is faithful. The Torah is faithful. That is one of the aggregates of Yah's judgment. It is the faithfulness of Torah. It's going to judge you justly. It's not going to judge you wrong. You will understand the affliction, the, the, the battles of the trials. You'll understand. A fool will think it's difficult and harsh, but it's not yesterday. Hallelujah. Yah Sadiq. That's why David said, I know your judgments are just. They are just. They are Sadiq. And then he said the composition of that because you're faithful. He cares for his house, Yisra'ah. We are the pillars of his house. We're going to be pillars in the kingdom of Yah. 
And wisdom has hewn out the pillars. So in order for us to be, to fit in our proper place, we must be hewn upon. We must allow this powerful word of Yah to cut. And not us to become at ease in Tizayon. We began to practice lies and hypocrisy. We are partial. We cannot be partial. You think that she is partial to you because you are partial. You think that he is partial to you because you are partial. And everyone is partial. Why don't you do what's right? I'm not going to stop saying that you elders. The older ones must teach. You older men must be an inspiration to young men. When they see you, they, their faces light up when they see you. Hell, you can't even find that it's sad. LeBron James is the elder statement of basketball, isn't he? When they see him, do, do, do only the children's face light up? Or adult? Adults. That's a fact. They go about the tens of millions to watch him bounce the ball. And although the team is being decimated, uh, they get happy to see LeBron James. That's a fuck, Yisrael. I use that analogy for us. So the young men see the elderly man a uh, uh, strength and beauty. And same thing with the daughters of Tizah, Yana. When they see the mothers, not these damn silly, stupid women. I hate it. Uh, I hate us. I hate a stupid woman. I hate us. I just, I hate it. Never have. Even when I was young, I didn't like them. In our school, I could have had many of the girls. I didn't mess with them. I was not a damn faggot. I didn't like it. I didn't. I didn't like it. That's the truth, Mom. I used that for now. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I, I just couldn't. I couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't roll that way. I couldn't. I just couldn't go that way. I could not. I just couldn't go that way. I didn't like it. And I hate that. There's nothing more despicable than a silly woman who got time to laugh in the cloud all the time. Let's get busy. We ask men that we find everything with, with this jocularity, just a little humor to it. It's not. I don't play, man. I've never been that way. I've just never been that way. Oh, that's a time to laugh. We, we, we are in a time to cry and to weep and to mourn. You can either love me or hate me. It makes me no different whichever way. I don't care if you don't like me. She has said to me, I don't like you. Oh, that's all right if you don't like me. So what? Care if you don't like me. Who cares? You, you think that troubles me because she said that to me? Never! I shall proceed. Can I show you something of great strength and something that will produce a great result in your lives, Yisrael? Can I read it, what David said? Okay, let me read it then. In the Psalms 119, verse 149. I'm going to finish this today. I have a few scriptures. You all just sit tight. To Helium, Psalms 119, 149. When one has practiced and allowed the Mishpatim of Yah to correct them, you will see a great result in their life. This is what David said here. He says, Yah, hear my call, my substance, my voice. Psalms 119, 149. He said, hear my voice according to your love kindness. You understand that? His love kindness. That's what his love kindness is. It's his, the mercy is your love kindness. He says, oh, yeah. Now, look what he says now. He says, does he say quicken or make me alive? Uh, uh, sustain the life, give life, give substance. Uh, he says, uh, this is an aggregate of uh, the mishpat of Yah. He says, make me alive according to your judgment. Does it say that? Yes. Make me alive. This is an aggregate. You must have living material to make something strong. You must have it. He said, make me alive, cause life, higher praises and strength and assurance. Make me alive according to what? Not according uh, to your riches, but according to your judgment. 
This is what makes us alive. That's why we despise it. That's why our flesh, our natural mind, despise judgment. We don't want no one to judge us. We don't want to hear the judgment. We don't want to hear the justice of our, our corrupt ways and how we have fallen short of Yah's great beauty. This is an aggregate. This is an aggregate of judgment that it makes us alive. It causes us to be alive. It causes the life of Torah to rise in our bosom that we operate and we function in the power of this light of Torah. We don't hide nothing. That's what it does, Yisrael. And we've been trained to despise anyone to judge us. Who are you to judge? I'm spiritual. I have the Ruach of Yah. When the Ruach enter into the present, the first thing he does, judge, make assessment. I'll talk to him and say, no, don't do that with me now. They just don't go that way. When I find men persistent in ways, I just kind of back off. I'm, I'm, just, I, I'm just that way. I've always been. I just go ahead now. There's nothing more beautiful than a strong man, an older man, an older man. There's nothing more beautiful than that. There's nothing I love more than a strong old man. And you see the gentleness of that old man. You see the beauty of him. You see the actions of that old man. There's nothing more beautiful than that. I love that. I love that. I don't like the silliness. Same thing with the bath of Jezion. You can see the beauty of their walk, their attitude. Come on, Yisrael. You can tell a lot about a person where they walk. I believe that in the natural sense. You tell me you couldn't tell one that was fancy flying her stuff and she wanted everyone looking at her? You go out here today when they want to grab attention, they know how to walk, don't they? Huh? Okay then, stop it. You know they do. That's a fact of the matter. Can I proceed just a little farther? Ah, uh, yes. That's one of the greatest things we can get. He says, to Helium 119, 149, hear me according to your love kindness. And quicken me, make me alive, Chaya, sustain this life, cause me to be prosperous, me according to your judgment. According to you, your judgment. It is one thing that one of the most beautiful strengths of judgment is that this is the only way we're going to Yada, we're going to experience Yah. And because we want to eradicate that from the midst of us, we don't experience the great power of Almighty Yahweh. We get hostile and, and we get upset with one another because one has spoken to one's own uh, 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 failures or one's own weaknesses. What's wrong with that? Nothing wrong with that. Then you can declare by the power of your Torah, I know that I'm weak, so I declare that I shall be made strong by this counsel of the wise. Why have we gotten so wicked and crazy? We cannot receive the wise counsel of those. Just like a child saying to the daddy, I know, you're 19 years old, years old duckhead. 22 year old girl, mom, I know how to raise babies. Mom is 55, raise you. It has no honor for that counsel. It's stupid. And that's a fact. That's a fact. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hear the Torah of Yah Yisrael. Yeah. Psalms chapter 9 verse 16. Psalms 9 16. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalms 9 16. It says, Almighty Yahweh, He is Yada. Yada are known, He is revealed. This is the only way. This is His pillar of His government in your life the pillar of judgment and the pillar of justice so it says Yah is known he has revealed himself he has made himself known by the mishpat the judgment which he execute or asah his judgment formed us shape us uh, fashion us into the image of his son Yahshua, which he has executed the wicked is snared in the works uh, of his own hand shila you understand that? The aggregate of uh, his judgment, uh, it makes him known to us. It's been by his judgment when he judged the Egyptians. Uh, 
He made himself known unto his nation. Would he cause all hell to break loose in that land, death uh, on every corner. He made himself known to his people. When darkness filled the land, there was light in the land, uh, in the land of Gosha. In this dark earth, there's light in Yeshua HaMashiach. And the only way that we can see the light is through the power of the Ruach HaKodash. You understand, Yisraya? So it is by this judgment, you know he is judging you because uh, he loves you and he judges you. Uh, he keeps you close by and you know that it is a judgment of justice. Uh, you don't call him in unjust because uh, he judge you. You don't call him unjust because he'll flick you. So he's revealed himself unto you. He, his kingdom power is made stronger. There's a growth, there's a maturity. Yisraya, can I say this? I don't want to act like I did when I was 22 or 25 or even 50 or 55. I don't want to see myself when I was 55 at this age. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see my attitude 45 at my age now. I don't want to see myself 57 at my age now with this attitude. I want it to be different. I want it to be refined. You know, but actually they got wine that's Two or three hundred years old, bottles that sell for a million dollars. And when one buys a bottle of that, one doesn't just share that with anyone. It's a select crowd. Those that are precious to them. And the one that has the bottle of wine, one doesn't just take to him or herself to open that. One gets a skilled wine connoisseur to open the bottle of wine. And then it is not as much as becoming drunken by the wine. It is just the flagon or the flavors, the aggregate of all of the material, all of the combinations of all of that beauty mesh into the very beauty of the sip, the flow, the taste buds, how it refreshes. That's why Yahshua said he would drink no more wine until we drink it in the kingdom. He comes to drink the the refreshing of the Yayan, the wine of Yah in the kingdom. This is the kingdom of Yah. He's not going to drink in a kingdom that is not full of justice. He's not going to drink in a kingdom that is full of, that's without judgment. He's not going to drink in that kingdom, Yisra'ya. He's not going to come down and sup with us if we're not just. And our judgment is not true and pure. We need that, Yisra'ya, and that's just the truth. Hallelujah. We need that. We need that. It's important to have that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's one thing I want to point out. I've expressed the word enduring, the ability to go forth without complaining and to be steadfast. Most, we as a nation, we're not able to endure, to suffer that situation without being aroused and becoming angry and agitated. There are those that will say, what about me, Andy? I've heard them say that. It's not going to make them better. If this man loves you by him having a wife, if he said, if I had one, I love you more, that's just a lie. If I had children, I love him more, that's just a lie. If this hope doesn't love you and doesn't show her affinity, her affection to you, she won't be able to show it to a man. If she's not faithful to Yah, if she's not uh, consulted by Yah, she's not going to be consulted by a man. It's just a fact of the matter. And because you think you want a wife or a husband, uh, that's not going to make you love Yah. Oh, I can change him. You can't change. You haven't even changed yourself. How are you going to change someone else? How are you going to help someone else? But that's how silly men think. That's how immature men think. That's how dumb men think and dumb women think. But a man loves Yah, he loves Yah. If this old woman thinks that having a husband uh, is going to make her more jovial and make her strong, no, it's not. Uh, it's going to break her down. And that's a fact. I won't put that on her. Not me. Listen to what Torah says here. I want you to hear this. Hallelujah. In Psalms, Kehelium. 119, 137, and then go to 160. Go to 119, 137, and also verse 160. There are two things I want to point out. 
David says concerning this great aggregate that cause our hearts to walk upright or to walk with Yah. He says, "Your sadiq." Now, the sadiq is the conduct and character. He says, "Righteous are you." He's talking to Omar Yahweh in Psalms 119, 137. Why do I? Why am I reading from Tehillim? Because David, there are two books that I've said before that shows a great intimacy of Yah. That is the, the writing of the Tehillim and also Yahanan. There was a great love for Yeshua. You see that in those two books more than you see it in it. To me, you do. Now, there are others that can say other things. That's fine. I, I won't argue with that. But David, he shows a great intimacy, a great love. He understood the failure of his sin, what he had done. That he could not, uh, he could not constitute the kingdom. He had to leave it into the hands of his son, Shalomo. And out of his loins came death and division to the kingdom. So he says the Yad verse 137, he says, Righteous are you, O Yah. And he says that you are upright, Yasha. You're straight. You're not false. He says, Upright, upright are your Mishpatim. That's what keeps us upright, the judgment of Yah. He says, Upright. That is one of the most profound aggregate of Yah's kingdom, uprightness. I'll break them all down in time to come. But that is a profound aggregate. If you don't have the uprightness, uh, what keeps us walking upright? It is the judgment of Yah. That is what keeps that aggregate. That is what keeps that, uh, that substance in our lives. He said, upright, upright, upright are your judgments. And because of that, we have been judged by the uprightness of Yah. In verse 160, he tells us this. He says, your word is truth from the beginning. Yeah. To Helium 119, verse 60, 160. Your word is truth from the beginning. And every one, not some, every one of your righteous judgments. See, it's one thing endures forever. Did not I read in Yeshaya that judgment and righteousness shall be the foundation of the kingdom and the kingdom shall not fail, it shall endure forever. See, we got to have this in order to endure the storm, the wiles of hell. And that's why the enemy is totally and consistently eradicating that out of our lives. We don't want that. We don't want to be judged. We should judge our conversation, our attitude, our walk, what we say and how we respond. All of that must be judged constantly. It must be, Yisra'ya. He says, your righteous judgment, olam vi'ad, it endures forever through antiquity, futuristic, it's always there. His kingdom shall be established forever. We need something in our hearts, Yisra'ya. We need the kingdom power of Yah. We, 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 we are learning, but we're not able to come to the knowledge of the truth. We need something deep down to enrich us. We need that. And if you don't have the aggregate of love, kindness, and mercy, and tenderness, uh, and gentleness among Yisrael, you don't have anything. You don't have anything. That's a fact. You don't know how to care for no one. I mean, come on, man. We don't even know how to identify, how to recognize Men don't even know how to do that. They don't even know how to give aura. And I'm not going to spare any man. I don't care who you are, any woman. I don't even spare myself. You would think that his son Shalomo would have great wisdom that would cause him to not to go outside of the parameter of Yah's Torah. He did. And when we began not to judge ourselves, we're going to do things that are very corrupt, Yisrael. This is what wisdom does. This is what the aggregate of wisdom will do in Proverbs. Mishuli, Proverbs 8.20.
This is what wisdom speaks to us. Wisdom said, I will lead you in the way of Sadaqa, in the way of Torah. That's what wisdom does. Proverbs 8.20, I will lead you in the way of righteousness. And then what wisdom, the profoundness of wisdom, wisdom has hewn out the seven pillars, has it? Has it not? He says, not only will I lead you in the way of the sadaqa and the righteousness of Torah, he says, also in the midst of the pathways and the pathways of judgment. That's what wisdom does. When we are wise among ourselves, uh, then this is what wisdom will always do. When a man is wise, uh, wisdom will always lead one uh, in the pathway of sadaqa and the, and the pure character of Yah. Wisdom will always lead us to judgment, Yisrael. And anyone that negates judgment and justice, uh, they're not wise. I don't care who they are. You're not wise. It will always lead us there. And, though, and the only way we're going to find that pathway uh, or find the pillar of strength uh, is through the wisdom of Yah. We're not going to find it any other way. And that's what wisdom does. Men think that wisdom is uh, sitting around talking. That's not wisdom. Uh, that is somewhat of a football singer. And they all want to outshine the other. They all were outside the other show. I know more than you. You don't know nothing. Because when one does know something, they will let the light of Torah shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Oh, the light of the Torah. I'm going to let it shine. Oh, the wisdom of your Torah. I'm going to let it shine. We must allow the power of the testament of Yeshua shine on us. And all the way that's going to be done by the Ruach HaKodash. Is that going to come any other way, Yisraya? No other way. And so men like to get together in robots and women too and they talk. But it, it's in the power of our lives. How we live. And how we walk. Nothing more beautiful than that. Hell, that's why I tell people, don't tell me you love me. I don't want you to tell me you love me. I'm just honest. Don't tell me you love me. Because that's just a word that has been a part of our vernacular has no value at all. I'm careful who I tell I love them. When I tell you I love you, I love you. I don't tell many men that. Many people, period. But what I said, you know, I'm real. Hallelujah. So this is what wisdom will lead us into the pathway of judgment. One of the, there's another aggregate of, 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 of judgment and justice. I want to point this out because we don't understand. All of this is in the body of Yeshua, Hamashiach. Hallelujah. In, in the writings of Yeshua, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 27. This is what Yah speaks of his redemption and his restoration unto Yisrael. And Yeshua is that great pillar. He is the pillar of judgment. He is the pillar of justice. All that we need are in him. But there are aggregates. An uh, aggregate that makes up the composition uh, and the composite of what Yahshua is. Uh, gold is not just gold because they, you say it's gold. Uh, the ingredients that make up gold, you understand? That's why it's of great value. And when we become of great access to Yah and of great value, then we have all the aggregates uh, uh, that, that form the great pillars of His strength in our lives. Uh, and men will see that. And the prophet Yeshua, Isaiah says in Isaiah 127, it says, Zion, we are to Zion shall be, uh, we shall be pada, we shall be redeemed. We're going to be rescued, Yisrael. We're going to be rescued. This aggregate, we're going to be rescued with judgment. This is what rescue us. This is what restore the kingdom power unto us. Zion is going to be redeemed with judgment. And it says, and her converts or her shub or her turning around uh, is going to be done with uh, sadaqah. It's going to be done with justice, with justification. Yeah. And that's the only way we're going to turn around. We must be judged. We must be. It has to be. We have to have spiritual men among us uh, to judge us, to correct us. And to show us where we are wrong. Show us out of the jurisprudence of Torah. That's why we have to have counsel of wise men. What elders get together 
They were set in the marketplace that men uh, would hear their conversation. And their wisdom uh, would be pronounced among many. And even young men that were not wise, they would sit afar because they could hear the ones speak. That's the way it was even in the secular system, the community I grew up in. The men would gather, you would hear the ones that knew what they were talking about. Uh, you go to the barbershop, there was one that would shut everybody down because he knew what he was saying. You could conversate on anything, he could rise up, uh, he would have the factual information, the knowledge of that matter, and everybody would be quiet and listen to him. That's not the way it is today. You had barbershop talk, but you had barbershop professors. And they were smart men, they were wise. Sure they were. And when that one would talk and one would say something, he would say, hold up, now that's not the right thing, man. And everybody listened to him. Now everybody's a barbershop professor. I'd rather be, you, you know, I said, who was that I was with one day? I said, man, Ox Simeon. I said, Simeon, I'd rather dig a ditch any day than to work. I would. To work behind a desk. Or any, I, give, me a, give me a pitchfork. I said, no way I walk in, work in Walmart. Stuck in, not me. Give me a shovel. Give me a pitchfork. Get, no sun. No way I would do it. No way I'm working in Belk. And so, me? Uh, uh. Give me the hay field with Ox Simeon. Get, let, let me bale hay. Let me throw the hay up on the tractor. At least it will build strength of masculinity. I'm not sitting nowhere. I'm sitting behind some computer in the air-conditioned building. Give me the outdoors. I'd rather have that. Is that all right? And that's just me, all right? Hallelujah. This is how he redeemed us. This is how. We, we want to reject the greatest of our foundational power. But there's a truth here I want to read here in Jeremiah. Listen to this. Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 2. Yah says, I, I want you to come back home, Yisraya. And he says, I want you to shaba. I want you to swear. Or in essence, I want you to take an oath. For what reason? This is the oath that his judgment speaks to us. This is what his judgment speaks to us. Jeremiah 4.2 You shall swear, you shall declare an oath. Yah, he lives. You must declare that he lives. He lives. That's what judgment does. Yah lives. And he lives in truth. And he lives in judgment. That's how he makes himself known, the power of his life in us. In truth and in judgment. And also in Sadaqah, in the, his justice. He lives. And the nation shall be blessed. And the nation shall bless themselves uh, in him. All twelve of the Shebet of Yah. They shall bless themselves in him. Uh, and they shall have. And in him shall they halal. Shall they shout hallelujah. In him. In him. See, this is what we must declare. We must declare that this great pillar of his judgment and justice, uh, it represents the power of his truth, his righteousness. And that's what we've been moved away from, Yisraya. We're far from it. I want to close as much as Zakhin Yaraya. I want to close with these two verses here in the book of First John, Yakahan. I may not preach next year about Zakhin Yaramiya. I prepare for next Shabbat, and I'll go with this. I need a rest in between, all right. Well, what about Wednesday? I'm working hard during the week. I got to get up out here Tuesday. I got to roll. I got to work tomorrow. I got to make sure. Ah, we got to get the gardens ready. We can't afford to buy the kinds of foods that we need for the health of our bodies. I want to speak a few moments on that before Zakin dismiss us. It says here in the book of John, 1 John, verse 4, chapter 17. <laughs> It tells, he says to us, within this composition herein is our love made perfect. That we may have a sure confidence in the day of judgment. See, this is how. In the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in the world. You see how he is? He operates in the spirit of judgment and justice. So as he is, that's the way we must be. As your sure is, we must be that way in the world. And the only reason we're not that way, there's one conclusion. I read this in my closing here from the book of Baruch. Second Baruch, 
Second Baruch 15 5. It is true. It is true. Second Baruch 15 5. It is true that man would not have understood my judgment. See, we don't understand the principles of Yah if he had not received the Torah. Because we don't receive Torah, we don't understand judgment. It is a true thing. It is true that man would not have understood my judgment if he had not received the Torah. And if he were not instructed with the aggregate of understanding, a man must be instructed. His iron must be open, Yisraya. That's why we don't believe the book. And that's why we do all the things that we do because we don't know. Hallelujah. We talk a talk, but we don't have an excellent game. Yeah. That's a fact of the matter. That is just the truth. We must began to walk according to what your commands are. There are aggregates, or there is an aggregate of what judgment is. It operates uh, with the aggregate of love, kindness, and mercy, and tender mercies, and, 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 the, and the hasid of Yah. It operates in that in truth. Uh, these are the pillars, or these are the aggregates uh, that sustain the judgment uh, and the justice of Yah. Without that, you cannot sustain judgment or justice. That's why we are full of hypocrisy it's not the sure pillar that has been hewed by wisdom may Yah's riches rest upon you all they strengthen you all in your sure mighty name we greet you all again our friends our listeners may he bless you all uh, may he correct you may he rebuke you and chastise you we all need that hallelujah we need that let us stand to our feet you all must well love me as my hope Felicia says to me you one of a kind I mean it, one of a kind. Let us turn to Yerushalayim. Like email all things we do, Barak, you are about. We pray for our precious Ochot Nikayala, her ach, and their pain. I pray for her health, her healing. You touch her mightily and touch her body and heal her in your shoes, mighty name. And those that are in need of prayer today of healing, touch them all, we ask. Your shoes, mighty name, touch us in our mind. Forgive us, Yah. For we have fallen short, but we are so glad for the mercies today, your kindness. Yeah. And teach us and guard us in all things. Bless our little babies. Bless the child that is in the womb. Give us wisdom and understanding that we walk in the power of your judgment and your righteousness. We ask all things in your sure's mighty name. Go with us, those that join us. Bless them all, we ask. In your sure's mighty name, with our voice we shout, Hallelujah! 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 Ah, yes!